discussion items the sub the last sentence the last word the subcommittees should be disbanded okay. and then I had one other question I guess um, on page four under unfinished business we have Graham asked if the golf course could be used for other users and I'm not I'm not sure what that do you know uh, the remember thing what is about um, sledding because we oh the my comment was regarding um, sledding because we had discussion about the hill being closed for some kind of drainage repair or just if there had been any so I think that probably it would be fix it by without rehashing the whole conversation used for other uses uses or if other users were considered um, for the golf course and since I'm on the microphone, I'd say I'm, I'm still in favor of that as, as a, as something to look for. But uh, you know, I understand um, that we don't want to damage the course. But okay, so instead of users, it should be uses. Uses, yes. Okay. It was regarding right. sledding and hiking and things like that. I see. Dog okay. park. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second. Roll call, Heather Carmona? Yes. Susan Callen? Yes. Pam Graham? Yes. Ellie Noble? Yes. John Lee Yes. John Lucci? Yes. Ann Yes. Thank you. Great. Okay, the next item on our agenda, which is very appropriate being March 1st, I think we're all optimistic, <laughs> is our um, annual golf Part, and we have Jackie here to join us. Thank well, you, Jackie. Well, thank and you for having us tonight. Nice to see everybody. Very good. And it is going to be 55 degrees on <laughs> Sunday with a little rain. But wow. Yeah, it's going to be very beautiful. Um, this past year was our second year in COVID, and people came and played golf, and the golf industry in itself has been a booming business from equipment to lessons to golf course usage. Um, to merchandise, to everything. So I am happy to report that we had a very successful year um, and with the operations, we made a net surplus of 378,970. Um, yes, it was a great year. Um, it's nice to see so many people playing. And the perspective of seeing these new members and, and existing is that when they're coming into the game, they're coming in to play because it was the only thing safe to do outside. Uh, generally, the golf industry, when they come into the game, they're coming in to master the game. They're coming in to get better and they get frustrated and then they, they leave and they don't come back. But this year proved that they are they're golfing because they want to, they enjoy it. 
and they're enjoying the camaraderie and their friends and their and that's our job is to give them a fun environment. So I think it's going to still grow and grow into the PGA show uh, in January. The National Golf Foundation did, did a um, and, and on some of these stats like uh, two percent growth. And basically, this growth, they 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 feel like it's going to go down a little bit, but it's operators. It's our job to keep it going, um, really, and keep in fun environments to keep them here. Um, and it's a different it's a different mindset, which I I, I love. So I'm very excited for our upcoming year. Um, so these are just some stats. The last surge we had was in Tiger Woods, and that guy brought brought, brought it up uh, on remarkably but on the first page there 18 and 19 are the two years that that we even suffered and i thought we were alone but we weren't so the industry was down during those two years too so we're kind of right on track with with the country but the two percent is uh that's that's big but this year we will see if it kind of stays there or maybe dwindle a little bit but I think um, the reduction, our early sign-up bonus is going to be in a couple weeks. So we will know exactly what we get when our numbers come out. Um, I just sent out a, uh, my e-blast today uh, to the membership. Um, so I, my phone was off the hook. <laughs> They're ready. They are ready to come back, which is great. Um, on page two, I, I mean, our revenues for carts could have been much higher. Uh, that's just to show some of the downpours we got. We had to close the course uh, several times with the carts. We were out of carts uh, 29 or 22 over at Lincoln and then 17 at Springdale, 17 and a half. But this flooding can show you. <laughs> I mean, we got hit, we got hit hard. It was, uh, uh, I think the one set Springdale practice putting green, that was like in 15 minutes. Okay, wow. That's how hard the torrential downfalls and the flooding in air area. So I'm, I, I know you guys know about it, but I just wanted to share how these downfalls were crazy. Uh, memberships uh, on page three uh, again increases all the way through that early bonus. We had 1,079 members in two weeks last year, so that is kind of the number I'm gauging on um, to see what we get and. Yeah, it is huge. So it's growing, and, and, and we just had a phenomenal year. Uh, combined rounds, we ended with 64,065. I put a, a, a chart in here from 2011. I came in at 2012 to show the, the healthiness, but just, just to give you a, a synopsis of we've gotten healthy in areas here, and I think we're going strong in the right direction. Um, Springdale was phenomenal, and. Um, I, that was one of the highest. It went back to 2003 is the records that I have, and it is a record high year. Um, second one was 2012. So Springdale is showing its true colors, and do, people do play near the courses more. Um, sometimes traffic or whatever, they'll go to Springdale more. They live around there. If they go to Lincoln Hills, they'll live around there. So they kind of go to where their, their life and it's. 50-50. A lot of people love Springdale only, a lot of people love Lincoln Hills, and then you got some more that love both. So it's a it's a nice, I'm very happy to see Springdale achieve what it did this year. Um, the rounds history is just a phenomenal. I wanted to put this in because I know there are new commissioners um, on the thing. So just give them some history of what we've gotten um, over the years. And then the breakdown. Uh, the breakdown for Lincoln Hills. Keep in mind that we had record rounds here. Uh, so it was down compared to our year last year, but it's very high compared to all the other years. So it is down a little bit in the residents and the guests play. However, the, there are a lot of members from the guests that became members this past year. So that is thus why the rounds of guests, they became members and those numbers increased uh, accordingly. Uh, Springdale. Uh, was spot on, uh, pretty much increased all the way through the board. Um, on both of them, on page six and seven, uh, you'll notice that the leagues increased too. So a lot of people joined leagues because they had difficulty finding the tee times. Uh, we instituted a no-show policy last year, um, where no-show if you didn't come and you didn't call in three hours, you were uh, given a fee of five dollars. 
it didn't deter much. We still had a lot of no-shows compared to last year, um, which when somebody comes in and you're looking at a tea time and the guys don't show up and somebody could have used that, then we, we instituted a wait list. And the wait list I kept very full um, at both places. That means if somebody called, I can sneak them in. And we used the wait list quite a bit this year. And, and like a doc like a doctor's office, but better. Because we get to go off and not you know, do the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, uh, a breakdown, rounds were phenomenal. Um, bottom line, food and beverage, we really didn't do much other than I did a lot of uh, a little events. Special events. We did a couple of pub events this year, uh, compared to 2020. Um, we also did our tournaments. We brought some tournaments back in that we, the next tournament, and some of the tournaments have been here since I've been here since 2012. So we brought them in. So that's a lot of the food action there. Um, beer and wine increased a lot compared to 2020. Um, and, uh, both years, we didn't have uh, beer and wine in 2020 until uh, Memorial Day. So that's why less and a little bit more increase also. Um, but overall, we're going to bring a, a menu back. We're just going to do the impossible burger, a burger, a chicken, um, grilled, a grilled chicken, a pub sandwich, and a salad. Um, and I did find a great thing for junior golfer food, pizza. So I found a uh, stone that you can put on a grill. Hmm. And I've got a great quick recipe that you can do it there. Again, we don't have a kitchen. At <laughs> so we get creative. I got a great recipe: yogurt, Greek yogurt, and raisin flour. You got a very quick recipe, and you can put it on this little grill thing. And I think that will be our new thing for kids. So I think I'll be excited to see that. And adults, but this is my little guys, but adults too. Uh, so junior golf, we uh, we we got back online. And I loved it online. Uh, we were doing half online and half registration, but with COVID, we went all online. Um, and in the first few hours, we had 392 signed up. Um, we filled it up to capacity to 427. Those were just extra ones that came and kind of came after registration. Um, we also instituted the American Development. So we got a little bit more um, to their age. Uh, the American, it goes about their age, their skills, and what we can do. So the little guys, the six to nine year olds, we're trying to get them to do more jumping, more athletics, and then introduce the game. And then the Eagles, we really changed that up a lot. Um, and we did the Operation 36. And that is geared where the short game is most important in golf. And they shot, they shoot, instead of going to a red tier to junior team, our forward tees, they would start right from the 100 yard, yard marker from the green, and they had to shoot a 39 or better, then they would advance back. So basically, it would take a four or four shots or three shots again on two putts and have a, a, a good one in there. A lot of, a couple parents, a lot of parents loved it. I had a few that had some objections. Those kids by the end loved it because that's what they were engaged in. They were advancing back. They had three kids make it to the blue tees. Hmm. out of uh, the 213 kids. So I was really impressed. So the blue tees are okay. uh, The blue tees are the farthest tees on the, on the course. So you got the red, white, and blue. Uh, red are your ladies' tees normally, or your forward tees. Your white tees are your middle tees, and then your blue tees are your furthest back from on the tee boxes. Um, but it was fun, and that will be on May 7th. Again, getting a lot of calls on that. Uh, so we're looking forward to keeping that up. And the birdies, as I always mention, the birdies are very important to us because they feed the whole program. So our birdie level stays stayed at 184. So that's a good, good program, I think. Um, capital improvements, uh, a lot of these were going to be done next, last year, especially the cart pass um, at Springdale and the bathroom, but it's all going to be happening this year with the least amount of disruption to, to play. Uh, so at Lincoln Hills, we opened up on uh, number four and five. Uh, we had some major, major water issues there. Um, a new rough bunker on fairway, kind of rough fairway bunker at number one, and increasing the putting surface on the practice screen. Uh, the current practice screen is kind of like a flat surface, and then it goes really deep down. So this area doesn't get used. We want to raise that up and get it more surface. 
especially with junior golf there. Um, it, it gives allows that we have late classes, the league guys can get out there and other golfers can kind of use the putting green. Uh, Springdale is, is the cart pass and the abutments of the bridges. Uh, the waterless fabricated cement bathroom. Uh, install a sock erosion. We're losing a lot of our bank on the bottom page of the tent of the right. Uh, number five, that Bruce River is eroding that bank. So there is a company that we used on one of the banks already as an experiment um, on the other side. It works very well. And that way we can kind of build that back up. And then new water cooler stations, we're putting water back on the courses this year. Hopefully, that's our game plan. And we got some drinking water, yes. <laughs> and then, let's see, pages 11, 12, and 13 are the financials for all the courses. Uh, Lincoln Hills, um, basically the weekday green fees were down. Uh, and the weekend was down by 1,400. Again, it relates to the rounds. Merchandise was down. Merchandise is a, um, a tough subject or a tough department because a lot of times since I've been here, we always, we listen to them, we bring it in, they love it, but then they wait to the end of the year. <laughs> it's all on sale. So we make more money on headwear, golf balls, gloves, socks, accessories, uh, well, and dresses. My women love the dresses, so we've been doing a lot of the dresses. So we'll probably filter some stuff in there a little bit. Uh, but kind of gearing more into what sells and what we, we make a profit on. We can't compete with pearls and the other one. And so we kind of keep it fresh, but um, other than that, uh, on the other side at, at Lincoln Hills on page 11, uh, food and beverage was up, power carts again, and junior golf back to its normal, and of course memberships. Springdale on page 12, Basically, it was up on the revenue side with the green fees, food and beverage, power carts, 22,000. Again, if we had a little bit better weather, we could ran those carts a little bit more. Um, resident memberships, and memberships due to the early sign-up bonus at Lincoln Hills, that's why a lot of the membership sales are over there. These are like twink twinkled in um, by, they get, I don't know why, but they always come to Lincoln Hills and get their membership. Um, and clubhouse labor that's, was one of the big expenses that, that shot us down. Overall, on page 13, my objective was to get the purple above the green, <laughs> to get the revenues above the expenses, and kind of keep them low. So overall, um, and we started in 2017 with the bond uh, payment. So we put, um, let's see, three, four, five. 550000 towards the clubhouse bond from 2010. So they did reduce it down to 100000 That's nice. I love the 100 instead of the 150 But whatever it takes, we'll do. And then the last three pages, 14, 15, and 16 here, not the last, that just gives you a rundown on the three years of our operation statement. And pretty much the status quo um, I think our expenses kind of uh, are, are out and we're just focusing on getting the revenues. Um, the only big thing is our lease income there. Um, we didn't get much of the negative. We had 83000 in there. That's, that has to do with all the investments of our, our funds. So I, we have no control over that. It all depends on the market and all that good stuff. And then marketing is simple. The customer. Um, I go out, I do go out after, after working and I'll grab something and the service out in this world is crazy. I don't know what you guys are seeing or what you're feeling, but service is number one. Always will be and that's where our focus is in, in conjunction with our 2022 club events. And those club events, you'll notice on page 18, 19, 20, I got a lot going on here and that is for keeping getting people connected in the community. Get them to have things to do, fun things. That we're gonna open up with the Welcome Back members on the 24th. And then the Cinco de Mayo, uh, night golf, we've got kind of a couple more in there. Memorial Day, Parent Child, Nine and Dine. Uh, the Luau is gonna be our new one. That's gonna be a pig roast with some music at the end. So they can go out and play. And I'm not doing pig roast though. I can't do that. <laughs> 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 and the annual turkey shoot, bless their hearts. 
because if that big picture down on the last page, on page 20, it was snowing. And those guys went out. Um, our annual turkey shoots one day, it filled up in all my events that we had, filled up like that. I had a wait list, so I added another day. So we had two events, and the food that we got for uh, White House was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I had some, we had 45, 40, 45 frozen turkeys in our, 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 yeah, fireplace. fireplace area, all loaded up with canned foods. It was beautiful. Right. And they were so grateful because they need all that. So we may just turn this to a two day event again and make it run. Any questions? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, well, it was a really nice report. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, one is regarding the the. Uh, thank you for having events that build community. I think one of the um, important things to the community is that the high schools are using the courses, and um, I. It's not revealed to me maybe what the business arrangement is. I'm just curious regarding um, the school district and the use of the course because you counted the number of rounds, but we're not showing them on the income statement or. Uh, they're, they're in that. Ah, I'm not. Okay. So. Um, yeah, they play. They give us uh, probably about God, uh, maybe. I don't know. They give about 2200 in that ballpark it's, it's not very much okay so they get a, a discounted they round price and they have access at a time that works for yeah, your schedule and their schedule april may and they might do a couple of days a week um sea home has springdale mm -hmm. contracted with them and the groves has uh, uh lincoln mm -hmm. then i also if i got room then i pull in a couple other if i get calls then i'll pull the other high schools in but they always have the first dips and if I can filter them in, I do have leagues starting. So in the afternoons, I got a couple of leagues that kind of, so it's tricky to put them all in. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, if I could just ask my other two questions. One is, um, I am, you mentioned ha uh, structuring an early joiners discount. Mm -hmm. And if you were running a business, I can imagine how valuable that would be because it's hard to make payroll when you're setting up the course and not having players, but you're going to make your payroll anyhow. So I'm wondering what advantages are there to you of having the big early advantage. discount? What? It's a, a big advantage. It helps you with planning it or? It us getting everybody in because once we open the doors in April, people wait for their memberships and then it, it's, it holds down the counter. Oh, so, so they, they they're not process. playing as rounds as early. You, the no, people they that come in and get their membership, then I got We got to process them. Uh huh. I get the phone, and then we got to take care of all the people here. So that okay. basically helps us. So good. Even process. though you don't need it for cash flow, you need it for flow of information right. and getting people on the course. Uh, my third and last question is: um, I'm sure that it's it's normal that your priority is golf and get go getting golfers on the on the golf course, but. Um, do you ever think or or read or in your you know circles ways to get other members of the community on the on the course um, for sledding for hiking for frisbee for mini golf are there any other uses of the course that you think would be appropriate or you would consider uh, I think winter sports um, and the drainage issue could be from winter sports um, major number four and five I've got a lot of pictures of them um, so that group that it, it's tight. Uh, golf courses are golf courses. Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of money on this golf course with uh, maintenance. So hiking, there's a liability of hiking out there. Um, if they're, that's my opinion. Um, okay. Golf is golf. Winter sports. Um, my golf course when I was young, I used to get kicked off on my golf course. Uh, because I would not have winter sports, personally, because of that. The yeah, the just that. what's happening in other. Uh, I don't think you see a lot of it. Yeah, it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, it's yeah. Cross country skiing seems to be one of the accepted uses yes. often. In the, in, you know, if you were to choose, right, cross country skiing versus. I would take that, but yeah. then again, on the greens, you're yeah. not. You know, the, the the tracks. You can see all the tracks, mm -hmm. and, and when the, when it goes out, you see ice, ice planes down there. It's a uh, it's a different turf. It's a very well manicured turf. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like grass that's like this big, and we pay a lot of money to keep it like mm -hmm. that. A lot of chemical. Okay, thank you. Can I just piggyback on that? Um, 
Is that also why we don't do fireworks anymore? Well, I don't know about the fireworks. We used to do fireworks at Lincoln Hill. Yeah. No, it was a totally different than the scenario. Yeah. 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 Well, that was very nice and successful. So it just, it just oh, yeah. grew out of proportion. So I think that caused its demise. Yeah. Jackie, um, I have a question for you. Can you hear me? I'm here. Okay, sorry. Um, Lena. This came up actually a couple days ago. Someone asked, someone was commenting about um, golf courses and how great they are and fantastic job. Right? Very nice. Thank you. And you brought it up tonight as well. And she said um, she almost happy that sign up went online but really can never get on uh, and so when i hear past year yes yes and so when i hear you saying that we've got people that are not showing up you know so i guess i have two questions before i heard you say that i was going to ask you um are people allowed to go on and just mm -hmm. kind of like concert tickets go on and buy as much as they want no they only okay. get to make one tea time okay and Great. that's that slot so to answer that question though, I was talking about the no-show. Yeah. Instead of three hours, they're um, boosting it to 12 hours to cancel. So that should eliminate that problem. Oh, so um, you're talking three hours more. to cancel in advance, so. Right, yeah. so the three hours, they weren't they weren't canceling it. Yeah. So then they would come out and nobody was there. Right. So now I'm changing it to 12 hours okay, good. for That's a cancellation. A so that gives a day. If they don't get it, they're going to get banged that no-show fee. Okay, I'll pass that back to yeah. I think that's a really good solution. Yeah, I have to tweak it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I started with the no-show fee last year because we never had a no-show fee. <laughs> and that didn't really curb it. So now I'm going to take it back further. So it's going to be a 12-hour cancellation. Okay, I'll get that back to her. Um, okay. I guess one other question from my knowledge. What does it cost to do a round of golf at the club? Um, a senior walking member is $9.50. Okay. And $17.50, $8 for the cart, $17.50. And then the adults, $14.50 a member, and $22.50 to ride. And then the guest seniors, $13 and $21 to ride. Okay. And a, senior, a guest adult is $19 and $27. So okay. those are our four, four categories, and ju juniors a, a, is considered a senior. Okay. That's a dollar more on the weekend. Okay. I really like you changing that three hour to twelve hour. Hopefully that works. I, I'm, that's, yes, I, I try to tweak it. I'll go with something. We'll, we'll sit down. We'll look at it. And we'll tweak it again. If we have to. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments, uh, uh, Ellie? Yeah. Um, thank you. It was wonderful. Oh, and I'm thrilled to have you another year. Um, I was wondering how old the birdies are the six to nine year olds? Six to nine. And the eagles and the aces, what are, what are their ages? Usually the 10 to 13 for the eagles. Okay. And the aces are the junior league now, and that is 14 and up. Okay. However, kids are different. So I've taken 12 year olds in there because of their, their makeup and their, their ability and their demeanor. Um, also, on the, on the birdies, I've added uh, 10 to 13 year old special classes because there are some kids that aren't 9 to 10 and they never touched the golf. So we created some special classes for additional classes for 13, 10, 10, 10 to 14, I think, really. So there's an opportunity for those who do, do not play yet at 6 or 9 and they can't be put in those classes because, you know, how that age and this age just don't match. Right. Okay, I was wondering about that. The other thing is, um, I remember when we were on the, the subcommittee um, that the early sign-up bonus was something you were thinking about, and, and boy, is it just successful. Yes, it has. Wonderful. Yeah, and it does. It helps out tremendously yeah. Yeah. Um, with, the, with the staff. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I have another question. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. As always, amazing work, Jackie, to you and your team. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Donna. A uh, couple of questions I have. On junior golf, I heard you mention the date of May 7th. Yes. What is that date? I didn't catch Oh, that is our registration date. Ah. May 7th. Um, I'll probably be sending an email on that in a couple of weeks, just to mark your calendar. Um, but it is big, May 7th. Got it. Uh, I think you touched on this briefly. The interest income is, is strangely 
now yeah. by a large amount. What are you doing to help us understand what happened there, or did they come back? Um, an item of concern? No, it won't come back. But it's lost. Um, it is an enterprise fund. Do you want to talk about it? Um, from what I understand, being a city government, from what I got from Kim, our uh, assistant finance director, is they're allowed to, uh, the enterprise fund to put into uh, bonds and treasuries. The market, I guess, was not that good in that, and that's why there's a loss. Um, so they can't go to other mutual funds or something with the government. They're only allowed to do certain, certain funds. Does that make sense? So... When I read it, interest income means this is interest on monies that are held. And our enterprise fund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 this is just all the excess that we've made over yeah. the years. So if it's sensitive to the market, then it's a possibility of come back, right? Well, yeah, I guess it's coming back, um, but we, we lost that. I, I think next year we might have a, a, a positive. Okay. But this year is, is over yeah, yeah. and it's lost. Okay, that's good. I just, I'll just just pack Jackie did a great job of um, explaining that, mm -hmm. and you're right. No, it's no, you did. <laughs> and in fact, that's something we were worried about. And so we, I talked to the finance director Mark Gerber, and it is exactly that. We're limited on the, the not like an individual that could move their monies around. So they put their money into a CD, CDs, treasury bills, um, treasury bond, and it, it only received one percent interest. Um, you know, while the rest of us were making 22 and a half percent, you know, or, or less, um, <laughs> that this was much less. So the city's um, hands are tied a little bit with that, and you know, you wonder. I looked at it too, and you wonder about the funding in there. But we we're very limited, and it's restricted. And we do a great job at that overall for investments citywide. Um, as you know, it was a great fund balance in the city. Um, golf courses as well, but um, yeah, you can't earn money um, that much if you're limited by those funds. So um, yeah, that's we were shocked by it. It just there were other areas in the market and the economy that were up higher, of course, and and that what we were invested in and we went into stuff is issues as well. So we'll always keeping Jack in our toes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a, little, a lot of up and a little bit of down. Right. You know? so, yeah. Last question I had, um, and this is maybe for me personally, but also maybe for the, the audience watching. You have an amazing roster of, of events planned. How can people get in, um, enrolled ah. in, in, in the loop on the communication? We are, we'll be sending out, but we are on the mist in the back end working on a new website. And with that website, they've got the ability to market like constant contact. So we'll have flyers up. I've created flyers, so I'm just waiting for that to go in, but I do send them out um, via email through the database, and I also post them all over and put them, put them on the cart signs. So maybe the, the email, I guess just to remind everybody, what's the appropriate way to get on that email distribution? Um, when they do their memberships, that's the time that we make sure their email is correct okay. and that they're on. Um, our database has grown over the past two years, so we're up like about to 1,900 emails. So that, that's then separate from the city? Uh, yes, it e comes e through our database. Okay. Yeah. We, sorry. I, and, go ahead. No, it comes through our database. Okay. But also Marianne over there, if I give her a flyer, she e-notifies. We just haven't had a lot this year. We only had three events, the dueling pianos, night golf, and turkey shoot. Okay. So we've got a lot going on to get out. So if somebody wants to get on the distribution but they're not a member How, is there is there a way for people to get in on that um that goes oh. through the e-notify that goes to their the city's database the golf okay so on the city's notification system one of the options is golf course updates i believe so yeah they check that in addition to you know downtown just they, okay. they would get that is there, and yeah. also yeah. they she sends it to everybody yeah so that's uh, then okay uh, so that e is e-notify through the city and or my database. Email di di distribution from the uh, membership database. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Any any other comments, Pam? Um, yeah. You you mentioned uh, with Dominic's question um, that you were working on a new website, and there were some other questions about registering online, making tea time reservations online, et cetera. I'm just wondering if you feel that you have those kind of uh, IT systems that you need, if there's something 
or and that your members see value to or do they wish there was some iPhone app or you know other technology that would help um, with reservations or registrations um, I think the, the website does nice nicely um, especially with the the booking tea time this um, it will have this one golf Birmingham. yeah golf okay. that is our website good Jackie, I have, I, it's amazing. I mean, I just, the, the one thing that stands out to me though is, um, you know, when times are, are good, it's the inclination is to just keep going, right? And you have worked very, very hard <laughs> the last two years. Thank you. What do you anticipate for, I, I guess it's hard to know staff shortages, but labor, I think you can only sustain so much, right, from a staff perspective what is the city or what can the city do i guess to anticipate and, and i don't know what the labor shortage is going to look like this summer but are there things that can occur to make for lack of a better word working and opportunities at the golf course is more competitive to other employers <laughs> you know to compete for what's a very competitive labor market right now i don't know if uh the money's there or our, our thing is up yeah um what i can tell people when they come into our place you're going to have fun here it's not going to be flipping hamburgers over there and sitting <laughs> behind there working on the golf course is great yeah. so that's kind of what i do um hr has been hitting everywhere for us um uh, marianne sending things out for us too a uh, new hire um it's just not here it's i at the pga show virginia i talked to a pro over there um from a 13-hour job they're paying up to 20 20 hours with a five thousand dollar bonus sign up and he's got zero so it's not mm. i don't I, it's a it's i can't tell you what it is um the hospitality industry alone not just golf is being hit right um the service that you see out there is uh not that great um i think it's a major labor force from, from employee from people it's like a labor yeah, strike I don't, I don't have a solution i'm just thinking when we have the quality courses we have the competitive you know the, the climate in which you said that you know and maybe there's just opportunities i don't know what they are to for and it's not you i think it's the city the city commission you know to really look at how to take an asset now because times it will start to go down at some point or level off right, right. but i think you know I just think it's something that should be brought to the attention that there is a surplus here. There's something to be thinking about and competitively how you can start attracting because you're not going to want to, you're not doing this forever either, right? No, no, I won't. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, you talk about jumping, not being able to be at the courses. There's only so much you can do. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, for long-term staffing for the city, it makes sense to start thinking about this as a long-term issue versus just a seasonal issue. And so it's just a comment. There is a um, support you and your team because I think you know I would be tired after a few years and saying I don't know how much longer I can do this. <laughs> well, and the I good you enjoy your job and you're very good at it. The good thing I reprieve or reprieve during the, the winter months, um, but we are thinking of that. We are we are we're constantly thinking of that, and um, I think what we need to do is reinvent uh, uh, the the little guys, if you will, high school people and try to get them into our industry and we if we need to develop them you know that seasonal positions are very difficult because you only can work them six months you know that's uh, that's that's the rules um it's not that you and the season, season runs eight months no matter how you look at it it's going to run april uh april to november maybe december so that's where the difficulty is it's just uh I don't have a magic wand or anything, but we just got to develop people that, hey, it's fun to work at a golf course. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, good. Can I answer that? Sure. No, and I totally agree. We've, in fact, taken that approach. I've been in constant contact with, by phone and conversation with our human resource department, and it's something that we're all faced with right now, not only city of Birmingham, but a lot of companies and businesses and industry and um, we take it very seriously. They're exploring or examining steps to to entice, to incentivize employees, uh, workers. Um, it's a totally different world for sure. 
that we've experienced. Um, Jackie and her team, you know, kudos to them um, these last two years and definitely turning the numbers around, working very hard, um, you know, just throwing everything in there. But we're gonna we're facing the same thing with our, our beautiful ice arena, you know, and Carrie and Connie are that's their bailiwick is the ice arena. Um, I'm hiring for both departments right now. I mean, it's I, we can't find the people. So I'm, we have personally been recruiting people, passing out my card, talking. I know Connie and they've been working on calling and trying to grab people from other places. You want to find that talent and the, way, the best way of, we're finding now is it's word of mouth. It's knowing, it's, it's we can't hire family, but it's, it's finding good quality character um, people, individuals that you may know or come across or worked with before. and you know, building it, but then Jackie hit it right on the head too with our limited uh, season, if you will, both golf and arena. Even though we're year round at the arena, it's still a seasonal, so to speak, uh, perception. So we're trying to determine it as part-time work and try to offer more benefits in some regard, which I'm not in control of, but we're working very heavily and aggressively with our departments and our city. Um, so I could put a plug right now that we are looking and hiring for <laughs> Birmingham golf courses, Lincoln Hills, Springdale golf course, and Birmingham Ice Arena. And parks. Well, come on, you could. You could. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this department is very diverse. We have a lot of business oversight and operations, and, you know, Jackie, it comes from the, you know, top down. Customer service is important, um, working hard working fast and furious, but we like to have fun. We want to engage the community and the businesses. And, you know, we've recruited the businesses before too to join for membership, um, focus on the neighbors, the different communities. So, you know, this is, you know, this is our livelihood and our expertise. I hire, I surround myself with experts and people that do a wonderful job in a great department and trying to fill the void with staff has been tough as everybody knows around this table. So, um, I just want to hats off to everybody, my whole team that's in this room right now, you know, Connie and Carrie and, and Jackie. Um, it's it's a great department, and you guys help make it worthwhile and exciting. And we got a lot more to talk about tonight, so I'll I'll stop. <laughs> All right, excellent. Worth worth a good discussion and analysis. So thank you very much. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Be out there. Yeah. We'll be out there. Well, thank you. I hope you guys have a great night. See you in the links. I hope you're not uh, too long. <laughs> no, you were. J All right. Sorry. Sorry, Heather. Do you need a motion to accept the. Oh, it's a report. So, motion to approve. Do you have a. Okay. She doesn't have a microphone over there. Okay. Um, All right. We need a motion. We heard to. I move to Ann? accept the golf report. Okay. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Susan. Great. Do we need roll call? Yes. Wait, we're, do, we're in the midst of our action, guys. Hold on, roll call. Heather Carmona. Yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Ann Graham. Yes. L.A. Noble. Yes. Dominic Police. Yes. John Rushi. Yes. Ann Lip. Yes. Same. Thanks, Becky. All right. Our only, our next item on the agenda is. Uh, Citing the Adams Park, um, we have pro a proposal uh, recommendation for Adams Park project, and I, due to a conflict of interest on Adams Park, I need to recuse myself from this session section of the meeting, and we'll turn it over to Vice Chair um, Post. Okay. Can I, can I ask a question before we go ahead? Sure. Can we ask the IT that's overseeing our Zoom meeting to? To make Carrie Laird a co-host? It's not Carrie Laird, it's the DPS conference oh, room. Oh, DPS conference room as co-host, please. That's one way of asking, huh? At the moment, they're just like talking in the conference. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully someone's not a parent there. Recording. Oh, we got a raised hand too down there, don't you? We'll get this going. Jack, Jack Burns. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Are we all? Yeah. Are we all set on the IT side? Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. So uh, we see a hand raised from the public. Jack Burns. Jack, can you hear us? Jack. <laughs> Always welcome. Okay, uh, back to the agenda. The topic uh, for discussion is Adams Park development. Uh, Carrie, I think you'll take us through this. Yes, I'm going to intro and I would like to share my screen so I can put up a beautiful picture of Adams Park here. So. No pressure. Is it this one that we got in our mm -hmm. packet? Yeah, it's yeah. right in your packet. Okay. So, um, and Mike Jacobs is going to just review the um, updated plan with us in a few minutes. But um, so since November. Microphone. Sorry. Since November of, of last year, when the City Commission accepted the concept plan, Michael Duell and Associates, and Mike Jacobs is here with us tonight from Duell and Associates, um, has updated um, based on uh, certain criteria that we had set for site amenities and the feedback that we received throughout this process. Um, uh, we met with the neighborhood groups. We revisited the Engage Birmingham uh, input and and got to work right away on our preparing our bid documents and specifications to go out to bid, which um, we did that in February. Uh, February 8th, we were out to bid for uh, proposals, um, and we received uh, we received five proposals. The spread is very tight. Uh, we were pleased with the, the proposals that we did receive, and we're in the midst of um, reviewing all of those um, and, and getting ready to make our recommendation. So um, those were received last week on Thursday. So it's quite, it's quite early in our process. We're still combing through everything, and, and um, we hope to make a recommendation at the March 28th City Commission meeting. Um, we're, we're taking many things into consideration as we're reviewing this, including alternates. Um, you know, the, the bid was formatted in such a way to um, uh, allow for deducts or additions, and, um, and we're, we'll be ready to make our Keep recommendation. Moving. We're moving. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's next? Anything? Um, Suggested resolution, correct? Yeah. But we want Mike to real quickly go through some just little any changes or improvements and just yeah. highlight a couple little things with everybody. Yep. I know that most people in the room here are familiar with the design. Um, it's developed a little bit since you've probably last seen it, but um, I'll walk through the whole thing for the sake of anyone watching on TV as well. Um, okay, I'm going to. We're looking at an image in the packet that's a plan of the park. Um, and it's been developed from the conceptual plan that we were working on back in 2015-16 that then had another iteration in 2021, which you've all reviewed and weighed in on. We got a lot of feedback on. And now this is the final version that we got actual bids on and put the construction documents together for. Um, 
So I'm just going to start at the basketball court and go clockwise around the park and highlight all the elements. Uh, there's an asphalt basketball court. It's regulation width, but it's a little shorter in its length to help, you know, for younger kids, it's more uh, usable if you're playing full court and running up and down the court. It will have acrylic coating, which is similar to like a tennis court. What do you imagine a tennis court with a little grip um, that provides more durability and allows you to add color to, you know, aesthetically make it look a little bit nicer within the park. We have a, a team bench along the north side of that. And going further north, we have the shot put launch, which is a small concrete pad with a, a shot put landing area that's an open lawn. And we have compacted gravel underneath the lawn that you won't actually see, but it'll help prevent against divots from the shot puts. Um, continuing over, we have the practice track and long jump. Um, it's three lanes and a large long jump pit. It will have uh, the rubber surfacing that you guys are familiar with at a track, track surfacing. Uh, the idea is to really simulate an actual track experience for the young kids to get, you know, pulled into the sport. Um, and we've been working with Roper on all, especially with these element, the track and field elements, just to make sure that we're meeting their criteria. And we are. Um, and on that north side, there's a row of trees along there. And there's also underneath that a row of grasses to provide a little separation from the parking lot and the park itself, a little bit of a barrier. There's That said, there's four openings up on that end to enter and through. Um, there's a discus pad, which is just a small circle just south of where the long jump pit is and that's just a small concrete pad with a um the throwing area that goes out towards the soccer field um you know one thing we got assurance on from roper is that they when they use these facilities like when they're using the discus facility it'll be during school hours they'll be clear to let everyone know in the park that they're using it and it'll be very managed it's not like there's just going to be discuses and shot puts flying loosely throughout, you know, a weekend or something. Um, so on the Adams Road side, it's pretty straightforward design. We followed the, um, the rhythm of the street, existing street trees that are along there. And really on all four sides of the park, let's say, we've added street trees at the border just to define the space. And um, trees were a comment that we got a lot of positive support on, understandably. Um, and so we, you know, through the process, we've been increasingly adding more and more trees into the mix, including a few more out in the center of the park, which people uh, specifically asked for. Um, and there's a number of trees around the playground area. I'll get to that in a second. The, the large open green space is kind of shown as a soccer field, but that's really meant to be an open lawn area that would accommodate any sort of sport, you know, pick up football, soccer, catch, frisbee, kites, etc. Um, and uh, maybe I'll talk about the grading of the park. There's, despite what it feels like a flat park, there's actually a lot of slope there from pitching from the north side, it actually drops down 10 feet down to the southeast corner. So there's going to be a lot of work just regrading the, the site to establish the right kind of drainage patterns that we want and to also, you know, level out the, the field area, the court, the playground, etc., as required. Um, and what's happening with that grading is that we're directing a lot of the surface runoff down to the what's shown as the rain garden here on the plan at the southeast corner of the site. That's a slightly depressed um, uh, area that naturally captures the runoff. You know, by depressed I mean like two feet below the the finished grade adjacent. Um, 
and that will all be planted, the native plants, um, and that'll soak up a huge amount of the water that's running off from the park before it goes into the city's sewer system, which is really the goal is, the city's goal is to keep water, stormwater out of the sewer system as much as possible so it doesn't overflow during peak storm periods. So this will capture a great deal of water, let it soak in there, you know, there's 18 inches of sand at the base of that. So it'll permeate very quickly into that. It's not like there's standing water in this thing. And when it gets to a certain height, if it, in the midst of a heavy rain, it'll fill up about 16 inches. And then there's an overflow where it does go into the storm system so that it, there's no flooding. There's no chance of flooding which I know is something that's been a problem here at that corner specifically. So this should do a lot to alleviate that and um, at the same time, keeping water out of the city system, which is a good environmental benefit of this. Um, and it should be really attractive too at that corner, at that highly visible corner of Adams right there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a park sign at that corner as well. There's another park sign at the corner of Ridgedale and Worth by the playground. And those are the typical city park signs uh, in a little flower bed to make it extra pretty. <laughs> um, there is an entrance over there on Adams Road uh, to allow people to come off of what, I think it's Buckingham or Dorchester over there it, uh, that sort of runs right into the park at that corner there. So a lot of people come from that side. I'll talk about the fence now. There's a perimeter fence around the whole park, um, minus the, the area adjacent to Roper School. Um, so if you're familiar with the site now, it follows the same fence line as what exists now. It'll be a really nice metal, black metal, vertical picket fence uh, with three rails. Um, very durable, uh, doesn't get dented by soccer balls or anything like that. So um, that is going to be a six foot fence along Adams Road to do its best to block, you know, stray balls from going into Adams Road. And it's going to be four foot around the rest of the park along Ridgedale and Worth, which is a more, you know, socially friendly, let's say, height where you can People aren't going to climb over it, but you can talk to someone through the fence easily. Um, and uh, let's see. So there's a service gate off of Ridgedale. Um, and then we get to the play area, which is very much integrated with what we're calling the gathering area, because we know that parents need a place too while their kids are playing. Um, and like to keep a close eye on those, on them. So the playground has gone through a lot of design considerations. We've met specifically with some of the neighborhood groups about, about the playground. And we got a lot of comments on the um, Engage Birmingham about the playground. We've tried to address a lot of those through the design development. Um, uh, let's see, there's, there's a lot within the playground. I won't go through it all, but one, you know, a couple of things that people ask for are more innovative, unique, um, sensory type of play experiences that are becoming a little more popular today uh, versus the more traditional play equipment, swings and slides. Um, so we have incorporated some kind of special, unique features through it. And also within these playgrounds, some of you are familiar, there's oftentimes these panels uh, within the play structures that have like the alphabet or they have movable parts that are designed specifically to engage kids' different senses um, as they're playing and intended to be, you know, somewhat with the idea that you're learning as you're playing, not just purely letting out energy, but you're developing your, your body and your, um, your senses. <laughs> okay. Um, the gathering area <laughs> now includes a musical instrument on the note on that last note on the more innovative play equipment. There are um, play companies make 
musical and outdoor musical instruments. Uh, it's sort of like a chimes type of piece. Um, that's going to be a part of the gathering area, and that's you know for kids for all ages. Uh, there's a lot of seating in the gathering area because that was requested and and is something definitely worth offering anyways. There's a large circular concrete bench seat at the center, and then there's a number of uh, benches and tables scattered around the playground specifically, but throughout the park as well. Um, there's a, a sandbox as part of the play area, and there's uh, a lot of planting around that area too, just to, you know, set it within the site and to make it feel really nice and comfortable. You know, as you know, it's kind of an open area right now. So especially as this first goes in, you know, there's a lot of sun coming in. So we've got a lot of trees and plants going in to kind of make it feel nice right off the bat. Um, and there's trash cans spread throughout. There's some boulders and kind of set in within the playground area um, just to add a little unique flair to the space. Uh, and then there's perimeter planting around the playground to kind of enclose it. When If you're in there as a kid, you're not going to see cars driving by. You'll see this planted border and uh, that'll look really nice from the neighborhood as well as you're driving by there. So we are really, ex oh, you know, one, okay. Along with the grading aspect where we're running all the water to the rain garden, we also included another feature, um, which is between the basketball court and the track, calling it a play hill. And it's a small, you know, a five foot grade change that helped us out with our grading plan, but it also creates a little feature out there for kids to roll down or slide down. Um, and kids and people in general like a little slope and topography. Yeah. So we thought it was a nice, nice feature that got that we were able to include at the end. Um, I think that kind of sums it up for me, although I'm sure there's plenty more to talk about and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Uh, just real quick, we're excited about the bids. We got um, a number of qualified, we got five bids and all qualified contractors. Uh, we at Michael J. Dual and Associates have worked with a number of them and can vouch for, for them. And we're reviewing the bids right now. We have uh, interviews set up with a number, four of them, four of the contractors tomorrow. And we should have a good idea which one we'd recommend, but we're looking at a number of factors, you know, price, quality, subcontractors, uh, and references, references, schedule. Yeah, there's a lot included in the bid, so we're going through all of it. Mm -hmm. But um, we are pretty close to where we, where our latest cost estimates were, were showing the, the budget. So we're really pleased about that, and hopefully we can get get all that we can out of this park so okay so with that th thank you michael um at this time we'll see any questions from the board pam uh yeah thank you the design keeps looking better and better really but i don't really want to ask another uh, design question as it's a complete design and already out for bid but um, as Carrie presented the in the memo, the summary of the bids, um, the column is labeled base bid total, and there's been some references to different options that were added to the bid. I was wondering if you could briefly explain maybe what features are not included in the base bid. Um, yes, I'm glad you brought that up, Pam, because the base bid actually is for all features of the park. Oh, okay. It has to do everything. Okay. Um, the, with the exception of an alternate that we asked for instead of seed sod, um, that was an alternate. Um, and so, of course, it would be a deduction of the seeding work and uh, uh, addition of the sod. Um, and then we did also um, wonder about if, if we, we typically, uh, at the city, we have an, um, a warranty for plantings of two years, which is 
kind of unusual throughout the landscape industry. So we thought, well, you know, let's see if we would save anything by lessening that warranty. So there's those two items were listed as alternates. Everything else is line itemed out. So, um, and we can accept or deny any part of that. Um, so the, the so to okay. your question, okay. includes everything. All right, thanks. And so there still might be some refinement. You'll, you'll select based on <clears throat> their their base bid and and things but yeah there's um uh line items for the roper elements for example and so if their contribution changes for those elements exactly. and i assume things like furnishings are line items so if you decide to come to us or come to city commission saying we should prepare for those but wait for donations or something like that you have the ability to do that exactly Okay. Very well put. Thank you. Yeah, we there was a uh, 130 different line items in the end of in the, within that bid form, so it's all broken down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Susan. Um, I think it looks fabulous. I grew up at 16 in Adams, so I've driven by this park my entire life, and it's never looked as good as it looks right here on the screen. So um, <laughs> I have to say, I think it looks fabulous. I only have a couple questions. Um, and I hate to even bring this up, but it's the first thing I think of when I see discus, that I see these lines coming right here yeah. and the points. And you even said only use during school hours. What about the kid that comes after school and wants to throw his discus? Do we need to have a sign out there or is there something that says for the kid that comes after school that wants to practice his discus, not during school hours? Is that a concern? Is it something we should have a sign up for? That's the first thing I thought of when I looked at that. So, we should put a sign everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, there's discus today, right? There's a discus feature in the park today. So I right. guess my question would be, what do we do today? Anything unique? No. But has, has that proven to be okay or problematic? It's never been problematic, but you know, of course, if we need to adjust anything or signage or hours or discussions with Roper on how to best handle something like that, if they, I think it's, we can. I mean, if they on. think it's not going to get used, I'm fine with that. This park is going to get used. I mean, I don't know about Prodiscus, mm -hmm. but I don't know how much the park gets used now, but this is a beautiful plan and people are going to be here. And mm -hmm. that's my question. Should there be a sign? I realize it's there. They only intend to use it at during school hours, but how many of your kids after school go out and do at the park what they did in school that day? I don't know if that's an issue or not. Um, so that's one. And then another question is just a question. Is that soccer field, is that going to be rented out or is that just a field? Are we going to rent that out for soccer? Games um, yes, things? it will be available through our permit process that we have for all open space areas. Okay, cool. Okay, great. And um, I love your rain garden idea. I think that's fabulous for all the water issues that we have around the town. That's fabulous. So, um, so great plan. I'm excited to see it come to fruition. So. We are very excited. Just yeah. quick follow up. These are just portable soccer goals. So if, if there were another event going on, they could be moved out of the way. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I just didn't know if it'd be rented out. Like I think Barnum gets rented out and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Susan. Any other questions or comments <laughs> from the board? I, I had a couple quick questions myself. On the layout, the, the diagonal gray box, the north end of the gathering area, is that a table or, or what is that? Oh, good good point. I didn't mention that. That's actually a pavilion, an open air <coughs> pavilion with a flat roof that does uh, stop rain. You know, it's a totally shaded, covered um, space underneath. Got it. So that would be a little shelter in a rainstorm. It would provide shade. Um, we were showing it as a trellis previously, but there's we've specified a, a really elegant, simple structure, metal structure. Um, it drains into the system. Um, and it's a, I think it's 10 foot tall. And it's, um, I think it'll be really nice out here. Uh, it's it's a little more useful than a trellis, and I think that'll pay off for okay. Thank you. And then uh, I had a question on the rain garden. You, d you did well to describe it as a, as a sort of a detented formation in that space. I'm curious, my, my first thought, which I think you addressed, was in regards to standing water and, and the presence of, let's say, fostering the growth of mosquitoes. Yeah. Sounds like that's taken into account. 
Yes. Uh, it, yeah. So what what is actually in there? Is it is it vegetation that is yeah plant material uni unique to like consuming a lot of water or, or? Uh, yeah yes um, yep the plants were selected for you know the ability to absorb water but also the real benefit there is that it's 20 inches of 18 to 20 inches of sand which is the most you know permeable form of soil so if you think about pouring a glass of water on a beach it instantly just absorbs okay. so that top 20 inches will just instantly absorb water it'll it would only have standing water you know in the peak of a middle of a rainstorm but very quickly it would settle out from that okay so and you the, don't you don't expect it to be sort of a residual moist surface that's going to be problematic in any way right no no okay. right. and and the plants add another layer of stuff and and they'll also act as a t deterrent from anyone going in there too so yeah. okay all right thank you um, that's all my questions any questions from the public either in person or online john you got a question yeah uh, yes i keep thinking about the sign um you, you kind of uh, the normal birmingham park sign would not mention that this is that this park is designed to also accommodate the school usage and i, I just it kind of seems to me that it would be there's there's two, depending on your point of view if i'm a member of the public and i want to use the park if i wasn't aware of where these teenagers over there playing doing their track stuff I might that might bother me and if i'm a member and if i'm thinking about it from the point of view of roper um i'm, I'm i guess I, what i'm getting at is i wish there was some, some sort of way to have a sign that would make people aware of the fact that this is a public park but it's also there to accommodate the students of roper and i'm, I'm not exactly sure how to do it but i think it would be a useful Point, informational point well taken, John. I, I, yeah. I'm not sure. Have we discussed this point previously? It sounds familiar, right? I think John brought it up before. I did. Yeah. And we, uh, John, I think that's great that you re mention it. I think that's something just like with any other signage, you know, things have worked now thus far. If we need to sign issues with regard to play and apparatuses and city owned or school use certain hours i think we cross that bridge when we get to it oh sure yeah, no, um, I don't, yeah I'm not, it's I don't certainly something that we as a city want to incorporate as well for the safe use and enjoyment of the park um by everybody i mean it is a public park you know if we get the grant funding definitely with grant funding it's got to be a open park um i think with the new fencing and the remodel I think it's gonna be very clear that it's a city park mm -hmm. and the school is just an appendage, it's just an attachment there. So I think let's let it play out and we're here to address anything of which may come in the future. Sure. Um, but that being said, I think these points are well raised and well thought out and you know, staff, we're here ready to address the items um, like to prevent anything from going wrong or, or if we could preempt stuff, that's awesome. But Let's not create something of, of which we've not had an issue with either. So um, we proceed cautiously and try to be as smart as we can. Thank you. Uh, I think, Susan? Can I finish one last Oh, yeah, this is on the same topic as what you're talking about. I, OK, well, same topic. Go ahead. I was going to change topics slightly, so go oh, ahead. I, I guess I concur with Lauren because I literally have gone by that park most of my life until the last 10 years. I always thought it was a school park and that it was not a city park. And so I prefer us not to put the school on it so that people, because now we're gonna put a fence around it. And I know there has been one on there, but um, so that people don't have that perception because we did not take our kids there. And my daughter's 17 because we were told it was a school park. Mm -hmm. So misperception, I don't know why, but that was the perception that we had. Hmm. So, so I prefer there not be the name on it just for that reason, but. I see. You say don't do not mention Roper School on the sign. Is the, we were always told that's Roper's Park, and you could not take your kids there. Right. And so, and that was by a daycare nearby. And so. Well, that's. I, I guess that's kind of my point. Yes. Yeah. I wish there was a sign that would make it clear. 
I, I mean, I think this sign will be really clear. It's going to say that it's a park of the city of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I don't know that um, labeling a concrete pad as saying throw a discus from here because Roper does is is necessary. Um, or, but I'm in my perspective as a um, a neighbor of this park, the design of this park improves the safety a lot. Um, the other, uh, it's already happens that they use it for shot put in discus. They use it, they put hurdles out there. They have starting blocks. They have a number of things that are for track and field. I'm really happy that they're localizing and moving those elements towards the school. And I hope that, you know, that's something that we, we visit to make sure that they remember and keep their equipment in an appropriate place. But if a kid wants to pretend like they're throwing a discus and they throw a frisbee because they saw that happening, I don't know, that's okay. If they want to run on the track and jump in the sand pit, pit that's okay too. They're not, they're not, and, and it will be, you know, those are safe elements provided you don't bring a dangerous, uh, whatever discuses are made of to throw off the pad. But somebody could do that to any, any park or we could worry about people bringing lacrosse balls and a number of things could be could be dangerous if they were used inappropriately and i'm really happy that this thoughtful design tries to use those uh school elements in the most appropriate way so okay thank you john you have one more yeah i had, I had one last thing when when you go to to the city commission will will the subject come up um of how much this was budgeted versus how much it's going to cost and does that need to be addressed? John, yes, you were absolutely, we're always talking money with the commission. Right. So not necessarily at this board, but we want to be open and transparent with you with regard to costs. We will approve sure. these, we advance them. Um, so it will be in our notes, uh, our report to go to the commission. Um, you know, as you see, it's a million dollars, and yeah. they were, the commission were certainly reminded at Long Range Plan that because of costs and changes the last couple of years and increased uh, everything, um, they're going to have to make some decisions. Um, we're going to give them our best professional opinion. Um, we want your support tonight just to be able to keep this on track, so to speak. Um, not on the Roper track, but you know, on our track <laughs> and and get this moving. I think we're going to go with the, the lowest. We won't necessarily go with the lowest bid, but because that, you know, we we want to go with the best responsive um, cost and best thing, best interest for the city. Um, they're all they're well, just like Mike said, they're the great group. We, we're very happy. We got the five proposals, um, the base bid, you know, everything but the kitchen sink in these and um we'll have conversation we'd love to have you guys included in that at the commission level um march 28th and just keep this on a schedule which we've been really good dual they've been right on target with it too and staff been doing a great job um i think it's ultimately going to be have to, the commissioner are going to have to decide um based on a recommendation and then what projects well i'll talk about some other projects tonight that are left on the agenda but um, what can we fund now with bond dollars and what can we use for future bond dollars? Sure. Right? Or other capital project dollars of which we budget on an annual basis. So I think, uh, anything else to add to that? No, I think it'd be helpful. You know, we just, we did just uh, pay out our last invoice to C.E. Gleason um, and company for the ice cream project. So those financial reports will be available upcoming. And so we'll have that information where are we at exactly with our, our bond dollars? And, you know, it's possible that we'll have a couple different um, alternatives for the, um, for, to, so that the commission can decide, you know, this is what we get for this, or we do that, you know. So, um, so we're still digging through all that, and we wanna, we'll recommend what we think will be the best park for the money. Sure. So. So uh, that's really all I have to. So it'll be a single recommendation, or will you propose? Because certainly all these bids are, are over the seven hundred thousand right. dollar budget, if you will. Uh, are we obligated to go forth with a, a plan that demonstrates a seven hundred thousand dollar park, and then offer up the alternative to say, but for a little bit more, you get all this? 
P possibly, well, that is, that's possible. We don't want to we don't want to shortcut anything, of course. Um, yeah, I, if I sorry, Carrie, to keep, take yeah. team in here, but I think you know it was that's great question, Dominic, and that's what we're struggling with because the estimates of which the park board and staff came up with in 2018 to come up with a, the bond dollars to go out for the ballot proposal, which was successful, were old costs, old estimates, and things change every year. And we knew we'd have to look at every, every project separately, distinctly, when they go out for bid and when construction costs come in. And that was something that we've always discussed from 18, 19, 20, and on. And I think now, you know, we have the really rock solid numbers to get a, a project and not short, short, short change a project to create more maintenance issues or, or something that the community you know, is not supportive of if based on the bond and the support of the bond. And, mm -hmm. and since, you know, this is a long time coming for Adams for sure. And, you know, we're, we're getting the projects, you know, moving forward. And um, I think that's the commission decision with regard to where the money, where's the money coming from? And, and what, what, I'm not sure if we're gonna come up with a couple options. You know, they do the ORs sometimes in the resolution the OR um, for the commission to make a decision. So that's still to be determined. Okay. Um, so, so no, that's a good question. I, I guess I asked the question with, with the perception that any overage on this project is just gonna come back to this room as, as a, a shortage on the next project or something down, else down the road. Mm -hmm. Is it, maybe what I'm hearing you say though, is the city, the commission may offer alternate funding sources to provide relief? Well, no, what I'm saying is in order to get projects completed here and, and awarded, we determine where the money's coming from. It's whether it's from budget item, from the current budget, from expected bond dollars or capital project dollars or grant dollars. So we're still waiting to hear from a $100,000 Oakland County grant on this project too. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. um, fundraising or donations, that's another opportunity that we haven't uh, initiated yet, but we've had a conversation about. And those funding could come in between now and the construction or even beyond, like you know how Barnum, how successful Barnum was. So there's a lot of opportunities. We don't have, we won't have all the answers of that on March 28th even. So it's gonna just, that's why we have seven commissioners to, to sort of vet this with. But you're right, the other projects will come back to you because you'll we'll say, hey, we're, the money is over on these items and these projects are either delayed or going to be moved to a different year right so yeah because there's no way when you get a bond and you have three or four years to spend it like we did with the, the original 25 million which was really only 20 million you have multiple years to spend prices don't stay constant I mean there's and then COVID on top of that right and supply chain etc cetera, etc cetera. so I think and 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 dual associates came up with a frankly a really darn good estimate on construction costs, which we didn't have that. Not only was it a design change from the 700 grand, so that so, totally throws out the 700 grand. Right. That design change based on more public input, updated right. information, and then you go out to bid on top of that in this COVID economy, COVID environment. So I think that just, there was a lot of variables. Yep, understood. So, I, think, yeah. I think we're all thinking the same thing. Right? We think. wanna keep this one on track. For sure. We wanna move forward with this optimized plan, but at the same time, we don't want to get to the bottom of our phase one or, or, or into our phase two list and say, oh, we ran out of money, right? Right, yeah. Well, it's probably a concern we all share. No, okay. that's a good question, thank um, you. Oh. I see the hand, a finished comment from the board and then we'll move to the public, Pam? Um, I had a question, um, if there were any costs that aren't covered by these contractor estimates, costs of city, city labor or something like that, that the commission, that would be detailed for the commission, or any maintenance costs for this park that might be higher or cause a change in operating budgets that could be a city commission question. Is, do you think you're safe on that or? Oh. That was an operating cost, right? For the, for the project ex itself, there would be no additional city um, labor included. Um, but we, but actually, so that's part of our decision making process and I don't want to get into the weeds too much because this you know we haven't interviewed the contractors and they may have some really good ideas on you know um, 
voluntary alternates and how we could save some additional funding if the city does something. Okay. You know, um, for maintenance, uh, there you know there there's always maintenance when you build something. So we will incorporate a portion of the report to talk about how it will impact our operating. Our operating in the okay. And maybe I think there's some design elements that were addressing maintenance issues as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, and we selected plant materials with minimal, like uh, not a whole lot of trimming uh, involved in certain areas, like along the parking lot. We chose grasses instead of a hedge. You know, so we did we did incorporate some of the um, elements of the park to lessen maintenance as. As, as possible. <laughs> yeah, and there's a full coverage irrigation system too. So, okay, thank you, Thomas from the public. Over here. Uh, yeah, is that my turn? Yeah, my turn. Just Perfect. leave your uh, first and last name at your address. Hi, I'm Jerry Rinchler, and I'm um, vice president of the South Poppleton Homeowners Association and have been participating on the committee representing the homeowners more years than I can count. So we are just thrilled and love everything that we've seen so far. Um, if I could just answer a couple of questions since I live two doors from the park. Um, Susan, the reason you thought that was school park is because when Roper um, purchased that building and property from the Birmingham School District, it was a Roper Park. Oh. So it was a number of years later that the city of Birmingham moved forward to purchase um, that property. Um, I've never seen anyone at that discus outside of school hours um, throwing anything. Um, most of the time the kids who are playing after school or on the swings, soccer, running, frisbees, basketball, and basically because there's not a lot of equipment there. Um, the other thing I'd like to remind all of you, especially when you go before the city commission and, and as you're looking at future um, improvements to other parks, this park has had, has not had money spent on it in in the entire time the city has owned it. So um, hopefully that might put that up on, on the list there. And Michael, I've got a question for you. You mentioned something I hadn't heard before in the committees, which was a circular cement seating. Could you describe that a little as far as, <coughs> pardon me, the material or how high the the back of it is or those kinds of things? Yeah, um, at, that's at the center of that center circle within the gathering area. There's a tree that's kind of screening it out, but then beneath the tree, there's a circular planting bed that's 20 foot diameter. Um, so it's all full of plants in the center. It's like a focal point garden but then on the edge, there's about, I want to say a 20 inch wide circular concrete bench that's 18 inches off the ground. Okay. Um, I, maybe it's 16 inches, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we thought about the height and, um, and that would serve, you know, you'd be able to see, sit on all sides of that oh. facing in any direction. And, you know, kids would also jump up and run around it potentially and play on it as well yeah. but okay. um yeah it offers sort of casual seating it would just be a concrete surface um, yeah okay super and, and thanks and thanks for being supportive and answering all my questions all right. thank you all right any comments or questions from the public online i see a hand up jack burns jack are you still there <laughs> Thanks, man. 
Thank you, Jack. Any comment in response? We're good? No, I just, okay. Jack, thanks for your enthusiasm and, and your support as always. Um, that, that ugly wall uh, on the ground is coming out, of course, as part of this project. And that little wall that's by the fence there is, that's all coming out. Um, and Connie takes care of all the scheduling, so she'll keep on top of that for us. Yeah, you. <laughs> All right, good for you, Jack. Can I add a little something to that? Um, one thing I didn't mention is that we're also accounting for uh, removing and replacing all the lawn in the right of way around the park. So that's the area between the sidewalk and the roadway. Um, so that whole area will look fresh and new when it's completed. Um, that's fantastic. I <laughs> Good. And then, um, uh, you know, one one thing we're looking at is is that was mentioned is uh, sod or sod in ter in place of seed that just gets it established more quicker. Um, and then the the only other thing I wanted to mention is that during construction, there will be a six foot high fence around the site with a green screen to keep you know keep the activity separated from the public. Um, so you know it won't be a, it won't look like a mess the whole summer but the timeline for construction is also planned to be you know within the three months of summer when school's not in session so if approved it would be june through august and completed at the end of the summer okay exciting times for sure concerning adams park um I, with that said i so to bring it to a close, we have a uh, suggested resolution, correct? We do. So, do we have a motion on the suggested resolution? I will move to support the recommendation by the um, city staff and our consultant for the selection of the most responsive contractor for the Adams Park Development Project. Thank I you. Second <laughs> <laughs> do we have a second I'll from second. the board? Ellie, thank you. Yes. 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 Lauren, you might consider asking Jack to be your personal motivational speaker. <laughs> I know, man. I tell you, Jack. We don't even rehearse this, Jack. And you're doing awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again, Michael. Thank you, everybody, for the lively discussion on the on the topic. Everybody's looking forward to moving this forward. Well, uh, we'll ask you to gather Heather from the other room. Thanks, Good. everyone. Appreciate Thank you. my call on the way and getting to that point. Great job. Thank you. Great. All right. And with that, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll hand the meeting back to our, uh, <laughs> I'll hand the meeting back to our chair, Ms. Carmona. Okay. Great. All right. We're on item five, communications okay. discussion. Great. The next item on the agenda is the communication and discussion items. We have a memo regarding, um, an opinion and outcome I, regarding the Open Meetings Act and virtual accommodations. 
I just wanted to share this with you. Um, it was on the it was in the city commission packet um, a meeting or so ago. Not this past meeting on Monday, but I think the last meeting. Um, just as an update, that if if there's to be an accommodation, the forms there's forms here um, that need to be completed, and then it'll be assessed and evaluated. I'd send it to the city attorney. So if that occurs, you all read it. I don't need to go through it, but it just was an update I wanted to share with you to make it available. So, so I do have a question. So any member, would this for any elected or any uh, 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 committee body. or any public body, when you're appointed at that time, would this be made a available or aware at that time to uh, I mean, new appointees? New appointees, yeah. Just, just to be aware oh. that this is an option for people who may have that, because you may be appointed at one point and then not have in need and then during the tent year tenure may have the need for it so well if yes that's a good point uh heather if they do have a need and they were they asked me about it i would definitely give them the forms okay and make them aware of this yep. i don't know if it's if it's readily available anywhere else but um that's something we could just to make sure it's available aware. i think it's just to make sure that people know that it's an option if they have a circumstance where they have to uh use it Sure. Yeah, and we would educate that person if someone were to ask me about it or ask Connie about it. So, yeah. No, definitely. Right. Uh, Lauren? Is, is this something that's sort of brought about because of everyone's now familiar with the option of a Zoom meeting? And so, so you might be asking for an accommodation to attend the meeting by Zoom. And then if you were asking for that, then you'd have to go through this form. Is that... Is that the gist of this? Well, you know, I don't know. Well, last meeting, there, there's been some evolution. It's been evolving with regard to the first was the Open Meeting, Open Meetings Act, and then now they're incorporating ADA. We want to err on the side of ADA with the state changes with regard to Zoom and virtual meetings. And so this is the latest. I wanted you to be aware of it because we've not had these forms for requesting that absence and um, or to be allowed to to view the meeting or participate in the meeting, I should say, via Zoom. Because the last update that I provided to the Parks and Recreation Board is that the only exception or accommodation that could be made was for um, military service. Mm. So, and I don't, I, that was in our packet at a past meeting, but um, so this is new and updated. So I want to make sure you guys know the latest and greatest um, okay. that's available to us. And that's, uh, yeah, that's basically it. it. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, no, it's, sure. Okay, good. That's great, thank you. Sure. Okay. And the next item for communication, uh, we have a little one pager here just on project updates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, I could tackle a couple and then um, yeah. Carrie's here for a couple that she's been working on. So, great news in uh, Birmingham Ice Sports Arena. Connie's planning for a, a big bash at the arena for everybody on the ribbon cutting, which Good. invitations will be uh, forthcoming um, by Evite, right? Um, so the big day is Sunday, March 20th, 2022, uh, 11 a.m. And there's gonna be a program available. And when we have that, those details ironed out, well, we can make that available, of course, to the board, city commission, special invitation, of course, for city commission, parks board, um, other local dignitaries, um, administrative team, and the like. So we're excited. Um, it's been a long time coming, I guess, not as long as some other, maybe other ribbon cuttings in other areas, but it's the best we could do um, timing wise. So that's that's the update on the, the event that you, everyone's been waiting for. The hope is that we would all attend, <laughs> correct? <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Yes. All yeah, are invited. Right. right. RSVP to Connie. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Open to the right. public or is that by invitation? I'll be sending it out to um, the board and We're going to do a e blast. Um, we'll be an open skate. So the members of that will be seeing our ice contract. Yeah. It's open to the public. Yeah. Cool. It'll be a, there'll be a press release on it from our communications director or communications department. Um, it's an open public facility. We want to promote. Um, it's you know for the community for the kids. 
uh, for the seniors, anyone, Jack, anyone that wants to attend. Um, it's <laughs> going to be a, a, a fun Sunday if he's still there. Still there, Jack? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen too much press about it yet, and so I'm, I no, hope that... No, the first to, uh, besides this, the commission, mm -hmm. then... It's... No, not even about this, I mean, press about the new arena. Oh. You know, just the, to highlight the... It's been busy. Right. So that this, it, it all is timed well, yeah. Yeah, so. no. More press to come, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the next one is um, the pickleball update. Um, all right. There's been some changes with regard to our, our um, speaking of projects and, and bond dollars. Um, as we were going to proceed to the city commission meeting uh, forthwith, um, we had to put on hold the pickleball award to Foresight Design, which you, re you reviewed last meeting. Um, he, they've withdrawn their proposal um, to proceed. And so, um, so that brings us back to square one. So we are trying to see if we could find another consultant that is readily available, not to delay much longer, but to someone that has the expertise that would be able to pick up, pick up the plans and the designs that Foresight did and, and walk us forward. Or uh, worst case, we'd have to bid it out, which would add some more time onto this. Um, we may have to. We may have it was to. given to Foresight. Sorry? How much money were they given prior to this or whatever? They were engaged with us for the preliminary concepts that were posted and for the work that they had done. Um, and I think it was uh, right around three thousand dollars, between three and four thousand. And did that result in some design documents that they turned over to you that we could turn over to the next yes. contractor? Yes, we have preliminary concepts and okay. all the background information. And the surveying and things that we're going to finalize documents are already the city property. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. Um, it was an issue with regard to the agreement that they had to enter into with us. Um, Basically, we've just got more strict on the COVID um, issue with the contractors where there's language in the, in the current contracts. Um, so no harm, no foul. We, he did a great job with us. You've seen the plans. We've showed those. Um, they've been on uh, Engage Birmingham over the course of time. Um, so we're just gonna pick up our ball and, and move on, um, huh, basically and uh, try to find another consultant that will keep you updated. You'd be our next stop once we figure out what next uh, steps are. Um, sure, you want me to take over from there? Sure. Moving on to um, trail design. That was approved last night at the city commission level to, um, to proceed with the professional design services with MCSA uh, Group Incorporated. So um, we're excited to get started with that. And um, you know that process will they'll get moving on designs that, like we talked about at our last meeting for all three areas, and then there'll be the public engagement portion. So we'll have a lot on trail upcoming at our parks and rec board meetings. All right. Um, and then prescribed burns is coming up in that time of year where we're getting ready to do our burns and. Um, We've done Barnum Park uh, most recently. We've that's kind of been our primary focus over the years. So um, I've been in discussion with our contractor for Court and Lake Shoreline, which we've never done, um, and Booth Park as well. We did Booth Park one time. So he's going to be um, getting us some proposals due to the timing and the nature and when the weather could break, that could occur in the month of March. It typically does happen either late March, early April. So we wanted to let you know that we are working on that. Um, it's usually not over $6,000, um, so we don't uh, have to have the city commission approval for that project, but we do want to have enough time to notify the neighborhoods um, that it's, it's uh, coming. So we have a neighborhood notification letter that we send out to areas of which um, we'll be working. Can we have a hand raised on the, on the screen? Very good. Thank you. And Thank you. Cindy. All right. Hi, Cindy. You can go ahead and do you have any comments? Hi. Um, great meeting. Yeah, I just want a clarification here. So far, will or won't be the Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next we have is the Bond Dollar Award for Cindy Lee Hall. Um, she's been in the Sure. 
Thanks, Cindy. Okay. Great. Any other updates that aren't on our memo or anything else? No? Okay. All right. The next item on our agenda are any items of unfinished business. Okay. Seeing or hearing none. Any items of new business? Dominic? I have some new business. Um, so first off, I wanted to thank everybody for re-nominating me to the, uh, the vice chair position a few meetings back. Um, I recently received communication from the city clerk that my term is expiring at the end of March, and I've elected not to uh, reapply for my position on the board. Um, I've got some personal and professional changes coming my way in the near future, so uh, I want to stay um, committed and, and uh, connected to the, to the activities here, but I won't be sitting at the table. So with that, um, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to play my small role in, in everything that uh, I've been able to be a part of. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, very insightful, and, uh, and very rewarding to be able to be part of this and, and help see some of this momentum build, bring some of these projects to, uh, to fruition, but also see li laying the groundwork for a lot of good years to come. And I, I really look forward to you know what what this board with this this uh, staff team uh, will bring together for for the future of the parks and, and recreation system here in birmingham so thank you again and uh with that seeking nominations for uh right. for jack i don't know if he's still with us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but yeah the uh, it'll be posted as an open position you know through the standard process so i wanted it to be as least disruptive as possible uh, so i'll be in town the remainder of the summer uh, so I'll, you'll probably see me around a bit and uh, I look forward to continuing the support so thank you thank you Dominic thank you John. we will miss you yeah. we will definitely miss you in your, in your leadership yes um, the, just a couple things that the board should be aware of the bigger skate, the big high school bigger skating team do you have a mic or are you going to be able to remember what you said yeah you I'll remember what I said so the, the high school figure <laughs> skating team is going to states they are first place in their district first place in their district Wow. Which is exciting. Oh, and um, oh. our boys high school varsity team is uh, playing Mother Rice tomorrow. And if they win that, they go to the regionals. Oh, there are two, two games out of states. So just want to let this happen wow. to our team. Good notes. Excellent. Very good. I was on the team the last time we won states. I just wanted to say. 2002. That's why they keep using the word dignitaries when they're talking to the I am one of the dignitaries. <laughs> we, we had street signs made, actually, that said, Welcome to Birmingham, home of the 2002 state champions in figure that's, skating. That's great. It made us feel good. Okay. Yeah, sure. Maybe you can show us some moves on the 20th, Ann. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skates are a little rusty. No, no, I actually have brand new skates. Oh. <laughs> I will show you some moves. All right, good. Okay, so the next item, moving on. Uh, any items on the, um, not on the agenda, open to the public, that any public wants to bring forth? Seeing none in our room, I we have any on the Zoom? Every time I touch it, it messes up. Oh. <laughs> nope. Seeing none? Okay, then I think we are prepared to adjourn the meeting. The next regular meeting of the board is Tuesday, April 5th. Thanks again. Okay, good evening. Thanks, everyone.